Well, here we are. I uh, just sat down and I changed out that drive out of the um, enclosure here. Uh, oh boy, there's the old one. There's the other one. Uh, now let's see. This isn't. This is a. Uh, you probably can't read that. That's an exabyte. Well, okay. According to this, it's like an 8700. It's a model 8700, near as I can tell. Uh, like I was saying in the last video, uh, 10 megabytes, gigabytes, compressed. <laughs> uh, wow, 5 gigabytes uncompressed. I apologize if I'm not making a whole ton of sense. I am really running low on sleep these last few days. It's uh, been a crazy couple of days. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was uh, kind of a comparison. So this is that eight. Ooh, easy there. This is that eight millimeter tape that we were just looking at. Oop, I'll drop it now. And this is a pretty normal four millimeter DAT tape. So you can kind of get an idea of this is four millimeters. This is eight millimeters. And I'll try to stack them nice. There you can kind of get a size comparison between the two. Kind of an interesting little thing. But, that's not why we're here. So, I've got this tape drive in there, which seems to work. At least we don't have any blinky lights, and if I hit the eject button, nothing happens. It's the one thing I didn't show you in the other video. If you hit the eject button, it would actually make some whirring and clunking noises like it was trying to eject something. Who knows why. So, this one, I'm told, is a... 7 gigabyte native, 4 gigabyte uncompressed. So this may be able to use those 160 meter tapes instead of the 112, but they are backwards compatible. And boy, oh boy, I am going back in my years of knowledge here, but... So, uh, let's see here. So when... Okay, so when shutter window is open like that, that is record, and when you've got it closed like that, that's read-only. Well, they call it, to the right is record, to the left is save. So, write, read. So, either way, we want to be able to write to that tape if we use it, so I'm going to put that in there. Well, and it went in. You can see how I, I only had to, like, kind of push it in a little bit, and it sort of sucked it in from the air. I can kind of hear it making some whirring noises, which is a good sign. Tape drives are supposed to make whirring noises. And it's blinking, which is also a good sign. Because they are supposed to also make those noises. Let's see here. Now, and what I should have done was run the cleaning cartridge through there first. Uh, cause I... Well, there it goes. That's important. Solid light. Very good. For the life of me, I couldn't tell you what the other two lights are for. <laughs> I suspect one of them is clean, and the other one might be data access. Who knows? Um, in comparison, the uh, DAT drive only has tape and clean. Tape lit when there's a tape inside of there, and it's ready to go. Flashing when it's doing something clean. Solid on when it's needs to be cleaned, and I think uh, flashing if it's like really got to be cleaned. I don't know. <laughs> Either way. Um, so actually, we're going to eject that tape. We're going to hit that button there, and I'm going to go and kill the light here so we can see the terminal when I get to that. So turn that off. There we go. You won't be able to see the... There, now you can see the terminal. Yay, it ejected! And it ejected and we didn't have any tape coming out the other side, too. It's just, you know... It's like you get a VCR tape stuck. Never good, never good. So I'm going to run that cleaning tape through there. And, 
Yeah, and this one, you mark it on the tape itself rather than on the cartridge. Just remember, your cleaning cartridges are only good for a certain number of uses. While I'm waiting on that, I'll log in. And I still haven't done anything with the console to where I have to export the uh, name, so I'm going to do that. Export term equals IBM 3151. And cool, we got that done. <laughs> Again, I'm sure you can't read that, but I've got a 6 2002 date code on there. Been used four times. So it's four times more than I thought it was. I've got a big box of this stuff somewhere. I haven't used eight millimeter tape since I decommissioned this machine years ago, or rather, not this specific one, but my uh, my everyday RS6000. Cost too much to run the stupid thing. So uh, electricity-wise, let me get the uh, tripod situated here. I must have had that closer this way. Get it so you get a nice shot of the screen there. Zoom in a little bit. There you go. So you can see I just did the export, so I'm going to not exit, I'm going to submit. Now, what we want to do is go to devices. Well, first things first, CD ROM drive. List all defined drives. Add it knows about a multimedia CD-ROM drive, so, hey, bonus. And tape drive, uh, list all defined tape drives. And uh, now what's interesting is, of course, we have a lot of old tape drives in here. We've got other SCSI tape drive, which I suspect is still the DAT drive, because that's at SCSI ID 1. Now we've got RMT1 it's defined as a five gigabyte eight millimeter tape drive, but it's not the it's not defined, but it's not available. And then we have RMT2, which is available, but not there. So, um, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, so what we need to do, I think, I want to remove a tape drive. And I want to remove that eight, that five gigabyte eight millimeter because we don't have that one anymore. Now, what does keep definition? What does that mean? No help available. I don't want to really want to keep it. Get rid of it. Go away. Yay! It's been deleted. Now, I could be, you know, picky and say that I only want to have you know, real named tape drives in there, but, I don't know. I was really hoping this was a genuine IBM drive, so it would actually show. I don't really think it is. I did some Googling, and it doesn't seem to be a IBM-specific <coughs> uh, drive, like the other one was. So AIX doesn't immediately know how to use it, or rather, it doesn't immediately know how to... Uh, it doesn't have a, a bio... Or, oh, man, I am just lost today. It doesn't have a definition of it within the operating system, which is fine. I mean, you can operate like that, but I was just, you know, IBM for IBM's sake. So, um... Oh, can we show characteristics on a tape drive? We can. Um, well, it's doing block size. It's 512. That's good. Um, tape drive... Type is OST. I wonder what that means. Yeah, it doesn't really say what that means. Well, anyway, I'm curious now. If we go to storage, we got a tape in there. We don't have a tape in there. So I'm going to take that five gigabyte tape. Or excuse me, the uh, the Sony 112 meter tape. I'm going to put that into the drive. I'm going to go to Backup Manager. I want to back up the system. I want to back it up to tape. Uh, I want to select RMT2. 
I do want to map files, I don't want to explode, I don't want to list, I do want to do that, I do want to expand town. Uh, do, 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 do. Honestly, I think that's it. Um, okay, so now we just gotta wait for it to finish blinking. Spent a lot of my life watching these tape drives blink. I used to be a systems administrator for AIX machines, and it's amazing how much I remember and how much I don't remember. So, okay, we should be able to go ahead and hit enter here, and it should start backing up. Now, should, of course, is the operative word. I've got my hand on the um, hard drive unit, the main unit. Kind of feel in the hard drive to see if it's chugging. It is. Pretty healthy. And I'll uh, pan the camera over if it starts blinking, but it hasn't yet. These tape drives were pretty popular back in their day. Of course, they never really went much further. I mean, pretty much everybody went to like an Altrium or an LTO. Well, there we go, creating information file. That's good. Everybody went to larger capacity tapes and uh, about, I want to say maybe 40 gigabyte was about as much as you can get on a 8 millimeter tape. I might be wrong on that one, but back in the day, that was a heck of a lot of data. I mean, you had a machine with a 9 gigabyte you know, total storage, you could get almost two backups on there if you really wanted to. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, not, not, not for everybody, not these days. At work, we're talking about backing up terabytes of data, and we're a really small shop. I've got a 200 gigabyte tape, an LTO-1? Yeah, an LTO-1 on my uh, home server sitting right next to me. And I got a DAT4? DDS4, excuse me. DDS4 drive, so, you know, the old school, you know, 4 gigabytes on a DDS tape is something, something to behold as well. What do I got here for DDS tapes? Got uh, another cleaning cartridge. Straight DDS, which doesn't say capacity. A couple of 90 meter tapes, it looks like. Those HP ones were, uh, those are also 90 meters. Doesn't say. Yeah, it's 90 meter, then the sleeve. A 90 meter tape. Let's see here, there's a little bit of thing on the back of the box. Okay, so, uh, on a 90 meter tape in a DDS drive, which is what this is, it's not a DDS, well, it might be a DDS too, you can get two gigabytes, so it's probably two straight, four compressed, and on a 120 meter tape, you can get four gigabytes, so probably eight compressed. Now... That's assuming they're not lying through the teeth, and that's a compressed value right off the bat, which they love to do now. Buy our 500 gigabyte tapes. Oh, well, that's only if you get like amazing two to one compression. And I'll tell you what, don't get two to one compression. SQL databases, which is what I'm backing up at work. So you can see what's going on here is it's slowly doing a, a dot crawl there. And I can still feel the hard drive chugging away a little bit here. I honest to God don't remember what manner of thing it's doing right now. Um, I remember, I'll have, I'd have to look at the book, but I don't remember what an image data VG thing is. I, see, I remember this being important, but I think it's a boot volume. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, ooh. Oh, creating tape boot image. 
I saw the fake drive flash. That's good. And that stupid enclosure makes so much ruckus, I can hardly hear what it's doing. Which is surprising considering that most server rooms are so loud these days. We used to have four, uh, what, no, one, two, three, four, five, five RS6000s running in one room, but wasn't that server room per se, we called it a server room, but it was basically a converted uh, office, because everything was pedestal, they were all pedestal or desktop PCs, <laughs> servers, not even PCs. So it was quiet. It was super quiet. If you were real careful, you could actually hear the hard drives clicking away, which meant something. You know, it was, uh, you could hear the, the pitch changes in uh, all the equipment when it was working hard. It was really a surreal environment. And nowadays, everything's so dense. And we had a whole room, probably, I don't know, 20 by 40 room and only had five servers in it. Nowadays, jeez, if you told somebody that, they'd laugh right at you. I don't even think we had an air conditioner in there. We didn't need it. We ran the entire college. A couple of F-50s and a uh, 390 and a big, humongous desk side unit. I don't remember the model number of, but uh, got it sitting in the living room right now. I use it as a uh, coffee table. I think I also remember this happening on systems that were much faster than this one as well. And it's not going to win any races. But we had uh, the Exabyte 160 tape drives in each machine. So once a day you'd have to go in there and swap all the tapes out because it would do a backup overnight. And then uh, we'd have to take the tapes and we would cycle them out. We had this whole box, huge box, suitcase size. And we would then take it down to the, um... oh, looks like the tape drive's doing something. There you go. Now you can see it blinking. So I think it's it must be writing the tape image now. No? Oh, oh, it's still blinking. Cool. Yeah, we had this whole suitcase of tapes, and when we got done for the month, I want to say, we would take them and we would walk them. We would literally...